question is, were there other groups working on this problem as well? And there were um, a number of groups around the world. There are definitely quite a few people around the world interested in this problem. There were a few groups I know who were trying to actually do this computation. There was an Austrian group a few years ago who gave up. And there was, in particular, there was a Taiwanese group who were doing the exhaustive search. And they were doing it, <coughs> what's called a distributed search, uh, which means that they, people around the world can sign up to, use, to, to uh, allow their computer to be used uh, for part of the search. So if you, get, if you need you know, 700 computers for a year, maybe you can get 700 people or 7,000 people around the world to give up their computer for a certain amount of time and they'll do part of the search. And these things, the search for Mersenne primes, may, some of you may know that people search for Mersenne primes in the, using this method. And in fact, there's the search for extraterrestrial life is also done by this method uh, because there's a lot of data to be sifted through. And uh, we haven't found any extraterrestrial life yet, as far as I know. But the Taiwanese didn't, uh, well, we beat them, so. <laughs> It was a race. It was a race, and uh, <laughs> it was a race. And you know, there's no, there's you want to, you want to be first. There's no point in doing being second in this kind of problem. So we worked in secret for that reason. I didn't tell anyone yeah. that I was doing this. <laughs> That's interesting. And we were just talking about other applications, like obviously the extraterrestrials and things, but from the the, the, the genetics side of the algorithm. algorithm. Yes. So the algorithm we used. After doing this uh, simplification, what the algorithm we actually wrote is called a hitting set algorithm. And it's to find things called hitting sets in a, in, a, in a big set. And the hitting set algorithm itself is a famous algorithm. And, a, and there are famous problems. And there are lots of applications of this hitting set algorithm. So but in principle, what you could do is we could take any application that requires a hitting set algorithm. We could take our hitting set algorithm, plug it into that application, and it might make that problem faster, might make the solution to that problem faster. And there are a few problems. There's one in, in gene, gene sequencing, which involves a hitting set. There's a particular application which involves a hitting set algorithm. So we haven't investigated this yet, but perhaps our al algorithm could be plugged in there and could speed up sequencing. There's another application which I can tell you about. I don't understand the gene sequencing one, so I can't tell you about it. But I understand this, this uh, one to do with diseases and drugs. Suppose you have a number of diseases, and you also have a number of drugs. And the diseases respond, each disease will respond to some of the drugs. This disease might respond to drugs one, two, and three. This disease might respond to 2, 5, and 6, and so on. And you want to find the smallest uh, group of the drugs such that every disease will respond to one of those drugs. So I just want to find a small group of drugs, maybe five of the drugs, such that every disease will respond to at least one of those. And that's actually that's a hitting set problem. If you were to write it down, that's an example of a hitting set problem. It's not, it's not the same, but it is NP-complete, what's called NP-complete. It is an NP-complete problem, which that one is too. So it's not exactly the same, but it's a similar kind of thing. But in principle, our algorithm could be plugged into any situation where this problem is being solved. And our algorithm is faster than any previously known one. We've, we've checked the literature, the published literature, and our hitting set algorithm, this is a serious scientific part, <laughs> our algorithm is faster than any previously known algorithm. So it could speed up those other applications. Can I just tell you a little bit about the technology of genetic sequencing? Which then might, you might then be able to suggest what this might be doing. Nowadays, the, 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 the genetic technology is, is advancing all the time. Yeah. And so there are quite a, a few different physico-chemical methods of actually deciding which 
base in the sequence is, is the next one. But barring that, the overall, is, um, you start off with your genomic DNA, that means your whole, whole set of genes, from, generally from quite a lot of cells. So you've got quite a lot of copies of, of the whole genome. And then you fragment it. You, you put in, you, well, there are various methods by which you can break the DNA up into short bits. And each one of the copies will be broken in different places. So that, um, then the technology will generally only read a few hundred base pairs. Uh, but it'll, every, well, the human genome is about uh, 3,000 million base pairs long. So you imagine, and you, and you may have many, many copies of that in your tube. Uh, um, and uh, each copy is broken up into pieces a few hundred letters long. Uh, and they're all broken up in different places. And then your technology will very quickly sequence uh, the whole genome, say, 10 or 50 or 100 times over, so that um, you've got so 100 times coverage will mean that, uh, on average, any part of the genome will appear on, on 100 overlapping fragments. And so you've got all these overlap, these fragments, because it's been, all been broken in different places, the fragments are going to be overlapped. And then you use a vast amount of computing to fit them all together into the right order and determine what the whole sequence is. Mm, that sounds very um, familiar. It sounds like so the hitting set. Yeah. So there are different chemistries for measuring it, and there are different ways of breaking it up. But they all boil down more or less to that. So, uh, so that's where the mathematics would come in and sort of how to fit it all up. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like you want to hit all of these. Um, you have all these different pieces, yes. and you want to hit. Hit means uh, they intersect with, with yes. all of them together. Well, the other thing is that, of course, every single individual differs from every other individual at many different points. You know, each of us has probably got a million different differences from any one, any other one of us. Mm -hmm. So, if, um, so uh, some bases, you know, at that particular point in every single root, it's going to be the same letter. But at other places, there are going to be two different letters because we all have two copies of every gene. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes the two copies are going to have a different letter at that particular point in the sequence. So you should get roughly um, equal numbers of, of the two different letters in there. Yes. But of course, yeah. you might have more fragments of one and you might have more fragments of one than the other. But it's, it's also got, so it's not only got to determine the sequence, it's also got to spot where the differences are and flag up this. Um, and you're, there's a, a reference human genome sequence. Yeah. Uh, but it's only nobody has exactly the reference sequence because we're all different. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got something to compare it against. Is it the same base? Is it not Craig? Mm -hmm. Is the reference Ah, uh, Craig Venters? Yeah. Well, that, that, that isn't the reference sequence. No. no. Uh, the, but um, it, is, it is one of the ones that's... that's regularly yes, tells us both. It's, it's, yes, I mean, Craig Venters and, and James Watson's were sort of two most famous <laughs> whole genomes, but there are many, many more now. But the reference sequence was actually made up. The, the chromosomes, in the, they, they divided between different labs in the world. They said, OK, you have this chromosome, you have this chromosome. So they were each working on different human chromosomes. And they didn't even come from the same person. Uh, uh, so. Um, it's the sort of consensus sequence, but yeah. that nobody actually has the reference sequence. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> they weren't even from one person. But anyway, we all differ from each other. So no one else would have had, you know, on the chromosome 11 sequence from the ref, you know, that was done for the reference sequence. Nobody else would have exactly the same sequence. It uh, sounds very familiar to to this this situation because what they, where the hitting set comes in here is each of these configurations, I pointed out this, this one here, has to be, one of those has to be a clue. So a hitting set is a possible 16 clue puzzle. And it has to contain one of those four. So 
And for every configuration like that, you have to intersect it. You have to contain one of those four. So I imagine I've got hundreds of those configurations. And a possible 60 include puzzle is a subset which, has, which intersects all of those, it has to hit all of those. And that's where the hitting set problem comes in here. Uh, so it sounds very, very similar to the to genetics application of lots of different pieces and you want to intersect with all of them. But the hitting set problem was looking at the context of individual cells. And with Sudoku you can do things like if two cells both contain the same pair of numbers, then no other cells in the same area can contain either of those numbers. No other cells in the same number, three by three grid, no other cells in the same row, no other cells in the same column. So yeah. A variant of the hitting cell problem, but moved up one dimension. Similarly, with three cells containing three numbers and four cells containing four numbers. So if n cells are the only examples of n numbers in a particular unit, then you can eliminate those numbers from all other cells in that unit, be it a row or a column or a square. Can yeah. you do similar with the hitting cell solution? Or are they still mm -hmm. mostly one cell by one cell by one cell? You're on a different, you're still, you're talking about solving a Sudoku puzzle there though. Um, so you're on a different. Well, the problem at this stage, right? <laughs> because you put the same limitations in other, uh, you, you, can you can define the problem with the same limitations. The way, I mean, what I'm trying to do effectively is trying to set a Sudoku puzzle. But I think you're talking about solving a Sudoku puzzle with elimin eliminating things. Yeah. So but, uh, your hitting set is, is uh, human cells, which grant rather than known, known impossible cell combinations. Yeah, yeah. And you can do known impossible cell combinations in a variety of these. Yeah. Um, and genetics is one, and, and um, okay, another day's work. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> Can I ask something? Yeah. I know that you guys have very generously brought along two uh, Sudoku books. We might kind of throw out a couple of questions and see who has an answer. And we've got two books up for grabs for anybody who's a fan. So can you think of anything that tests the audience on your, uh, on your talk or anything like that? Um, so, um, okay. What? I'll put you on the spot. I? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so by doing it in yeah. So by doing it in brute force, by doing a, a stupid brute force exhaustive search. Okay. How long is it going to take? How long would it take on one computer? Give that man a <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Hope you do so. <laughs> and the other one is, yeah, after we use the mathematics to reduce the search, how long, how long did it take? Yeah, I did, I was actually wrong there, but, but I did say 170, so well done. <laughs> what is the right answer? It's actually 700. Around about 750, 750. Yeah, um, but I, yeah, I did say I did say 170. Didn't I? Yeah. That was because so. the order of magnitude was got in the way. Th that was what no, that was what I wanted. I wanted um, yeah. the search algorithm to go down to one second for each grid, but I could only get about four seconds. So it actually worked out about wanted 170. It was actually about four times that. Yeah. Um, so we still managed to get it in done on the on the supercomputer. How did you convince them to let you have it? Um, that took yeah. Th I had to. It got reviewed. It gets reviewed internationally. You have to send in an application, and it gets reviewed by international reviewers. And they said, "Well, yeah, this algorithm." <laughs> Uh, it, first of all, you're breaking new ground. You're pushing techniques to the limit, and you are you are breaking new ground there. So that's always worthwhile doing. You, but you can certainly argue there's no application of this problem, you know, in itself. But there are other applications. Of the, it's a hitting. It's really a hitting set algorithm. 
there, there are lots of applications. It's an efficient Linux algorithm, and there are lots of other applications to that. So that that got her, that gets around that problem. Well, it was written in C++ and assembly language. And assembly? Yeah. English. Assembly, because I don't want to get into the technicalities, but we had to really optimize it for the, for the platform it was running on. Which was? Which was Intel Nihalem processors. So they have a cluster of Intel Nihalem processors, a particular kind of processor. So we had to really study how these processors work, how they're actually made. We had to study the architecture of these processors, the hardware, how it's made, how it moves data around, and instruct it in the most efficient way with assembly language. To, we had to go down to that level to optimize everything. Um, <laughs> certainly not, not done in visual basic. No. Are there patterns like in magic squares at all? Patterns, or is it just pure like calculation, really, with with the with what you're doing? Like, you know, like I, I think back to maths I did with Klein four and group theory and, and, and stuff like that. And I'm just wondering, is there any connection with any of that, that level of maths, where there's definite patterns appearing? Um, I'm not sure exactly where where you mean the patterns, but. There's well, group theory yeah. in the in the cutting down the number of grids. There's 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 symmetry. We're using the symmetries there, the rotations and the reflections, so on. Using matrices then within that? Not really. It's just um, but it is group theory. Okay. But there is a group, yeah. I think so that's my question earlier on. I think you were not looking at patterns. You were looking at individual grids and, and relationships between individual grids. Yes, 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 yeah. If, if, two, if one grid can be obtained from another grid by one of these right. operations, yeah. rotation or whatever, then uh, they're considered equivalent, and so we only need to check one of those. Yeah. Yeah. But so given the that's of Sudoku, there are all sorts of grid combinations with strange names involving wings and butterflies, and that sort of problem. Again, those which, are the, the solving. will move up one or one more level of complexity from what you were doing. Not to be little what you were doing, but you were looking at grid versus grid. Like those four numbers, dead simple. But there are other combinations which are impossible given the rules of the logo, but not impossible in um, the, the hitting the hitting that algorithm because that's a totally yeah. different problem with you. Given You're an way. expert solver, I can tell. So those are solving techniques. Yeah. Those well, are different uh, tricks for solving so a Sudoku. Solving it, given the exact lim limitations of Sudoku, which are yeah. not the exact limitations of other problems where the hitting cell algorithm is of importance, such as in genetics, where, and which is why the, um, somebody with a glass of red wine on the Sudoku on a Friday is one possible target, but someone trying to solve problems in genetics is uh, another target, and perhaps more important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah. That's, real, that's real work. Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Where what no, if this could be used to speed up a, a sequencing, so like sequence, that would be a real, a real application. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Comments? No? We'll give you a break now. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you.